After about 30 years of existence, six to eight shows depending on who you ask, and four television movies, the Scooby-Doo franchise was struggling. The formula of five friends investigating mysteries and monsters, ending in a mask off, human was behind it the whole time reveal, was losing steam. Time Warner had purchased Hanna-Barbera to help populate Cartoon Network, and a direct-to-video feature film was proposed. What happened next would change the course of the franchise, as four of the most well-known Scooby-Doo features were released to great success due to the way they broke the formula. The monsters were real! Welcome to what I'm calling, for lack of a better name, Scooptober, where we'll take a look at staples of my childhood, the movies that are, in my opinion, the most nostalgic Scooby-Doo movies out there. Buckle in and get ready for a month of monsters that can't be defeated by taking off their masks. <laughs> What's up, you dang hippies? This week we're revisiting Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. This was the third direct-to-video film produced for the franchise, released in 2000. Before watching it again, the main thing I remembered about this movie were Shaggy's Hippie GF and the Burger King toys. I did totally misremember her name as Mary Jane, but that's from the live-action movie. They couldn't be that in your face with the jokes here. I'm not sure why, but I watched it a lot less than the other three, and have not historically had as much nostalgia for it. But after watching it again this month, I actually have a newfound appreciation. Let's get into it. So basically, in this movie, the mystery gang is driving through a desert when a sandstorm kicks in and Shaggy makes a wrong turn into a government zone that is being monitored by scientists for alien activity, subsequently crashing the van upon seeing a UFO. Shaggy and Scooby get abducted by aliens overnight and awake the next day to find their perfect love interests have appeared out of nowhere. Were they really abducted by aliens? Is there real alien activity in this desert? Who are these groovy ladies? These are just some of the questions that the gang has to find out. I watched Alien Invaders three times to make this video, and it really grew on me. One of my favorite things about it is the way it weaves together the classic mask-off villain formula with the new Monsters Are Real format that Zombie Island introduced, and that's because Lance Falk and David Doy from the Zombie Island team were able to write the screenplay themselves rather than having to fight back against Warner Brothers' interference. The viewer goes most of the movie thinking that these hideous green dudes are real aliens because of the precedent set by the last few movies, and even Buck the Mechanic is set up as a red herring with his dark demeanor. And I think this results in a lot more satisfying of a story because you genuinely do kind of get the wool pulled over your eyes, and I think most viewers were probably surprised by the twist at the end. Which we'll get to, don't worry. These two ladies right here are my favorite part of the film. They are the catalyst for bringing out a different side of Shaggy and Scooby that I don't really recall seeing before or after, and they totally subvert any expectations you might have about them going in. The way that Crystal and Amber are introduced is brilliant because it transitions from a shot of the green guys to a shot of them. So even if the viewer thinks they're smart when they guess that Crystal and Amber are aliens, they're still wrong because they're not the green ones as it's implied here. I don't know about you, but I think I just found my dream girl. I love this moment when Shaggy and Scooby are just absolutely on cloud nine after meeting their dream girls, and then Fred picks up Shaggy's water bottle to smell it, as if there's booze in there or something? I was so taken aback when I noticed that. There are a couple songs made for this movie, and I especially love the groovy song sequence for its art and the earnest vocal delivery. Scott Inez did a fantastic job singing in Shaggy's voice, and it's just such a sweet and genuine moment that shows a softer side of the character. The sequence really melts my heart watching it back. Like, all Shaggy really wants is a hippie girlfriend and a house full of 60s decor and some good food. What a gem. Wait, is that a baby? And the dogs had babies? Whoa. Okay, never mind. It was a daydream. Pause. <laughs> the depths of their love must really know no bounds because these two are notorious for running away and hiding during scary moments, and they throw their shaking bodies in front of the girls to protect them anyways. Shaggy has historically always been the quietly obvious stoner dude who just wants to hang out with his dog and score some grub. And that totally works for the episodic format that most of the franchise lives in. Fred and Velma lead the investigative charge, Daphne kind of just stands there and looks pretty, and Shaggy and Scooby run away and hide with a plate of wings or something. But I'm deeply appreciative of the writer's willingness in this film to take this goofy dude and turn him into a romantic lead for a change. Although they do have moments where this is done at his expense, the general treatment of Shaggy's romance with Crystal is very sweet and genuine. The earnest nature of the boys cleaning up their act, their desire to just be around the girls as they do their thing, 
the repeated bringing them tokens of affection, it's refreshing and really sweet. I have seen people say in different situations and contexts that romance doesn't belong in Scooby-Doo, and I disagree. I think this is a good example of how it could totally work for the franchise. Ultimately, I think the love arc is quite sad because Crystal and Amber seem perfectly made for Shaggy and Scooby, as if they were designed as bait, but they actually just happen to be genuinely the perfect matchup due to happenstance. And they're from a different planet and will never see each other again after the end of the story. Damn, can they just get a win? I will never ship Shaggy and Velma again. I genuinely hope that someday we see Crystal again in some iteration of the franchise. Can we just... All right. Another Burger King Big Kids meal? Hey, he's no trick or treater. Metal Kids! Glow in the dark Scooby-Doo toys from the new video and DVD, Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. One inside every Burger King kids meal you buy. Taste rules! This Tuesday, only on video, Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders. Wait! Yes! Yes! The all-new Scooby-Doo movie. <laughs> Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders, coming this Tuesday, only on video, cassette, and DVD. Okay, so we've talked about some of the strengths, let's talk critiques and concerns. I don't find the villains of this movie particularly interesting or memorable. They do a terrible job of hiding their operation, and Velma is able to deduce that they are masquerading as aliens and up to something shady relatively soon after getting to know them. I think it's kind of funny that she waited until after the chase scene to make it known to Fred and Daphne that the scientists were underneath the alien suits, though. But I guess if she had told them, they would have stopped running, and that doesn't really work for wanting to include a chase scene in the movie. And by the way, Fred and Daphne are pretty useless in this movie. Daphne is just there to look cute in those mom shorts, and Fred is... Actually, yeah, he's doing the same thing. Fred is peak himbo. Something else that stands out to me is, of course Scooby and Shaggy slept on the roof in a zone where aliens are apparently on the loose. What a convenient spot for abductions! But how did the team behind the alien hoax manage to build and pilot an entire UFO ship? That's the most far-fetched thing to me, and I wish there had been a little bit more of a meaty explanation there. They say they attached a giant metal plate to the bottom of a helicopter and then built an entire spaceship interior underground, which still seems pretty far-fetched. That's a ton of work to consider construct while also mining gold and doing their day jobs. And even if their day jobs aren't that demanding, they're government employees and someone would probably notice if they were gone for hours at a time building an entire underground lair. I gotta say, I don't love the sound of the song that plays during the chase segment, but I do think it's pretty cool that they had a whole song written for the chase scene, just like they did with Hello Cyber Dream and Cyber Chase. It's just funny to me, as a songwriter myself, to think about like, okay, for these 10 seconds of the song, we gotta talk about them being chased down this tunnel or whatever, and like, having to time the lyrics to what's going on, but they did a great job. Anyway, the final reveal of the movie is that Crystal and Amber are the real aliens in the story, which I find to be wonderfully subversive. The story is set up so that you might think they have ulterior motives or secretly be working against the mystery gang, but they don't, and they're not. And I think it's really fresh and satisfying that they're on the gang's side the entire way through despite being the real monsters in the story. The only other time I can think of where the gang befriended real monsters was maybe Ghoul School? I'm probably forgetting something, so let me know in the comments. Their designs are pretty dope. I love that Crystal's remains humanoid and Amber's is more creature-like. It's really sweet to me that Shaggy and Scooby care about these girls so much. They don't even care that they just fell in love with aliens. They just want them to be okay. I just wish that, well, you know. I'm looking for someone too. Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders was the last cell animated film made by the Zombie Island team as the fourth one, Cyber Chase, moved to digital animation, and the last one that they were able to write themselves. As a result of the team being able to create without corporate intervention, I think it's got a strong enough story that holds up for me even without the nostalgia factor. The script answers every question that gets raised, the hows and whys of the scientists' alien scheme, why the mechanic has such a sullen demeanor, and even why Crystal's aesthetic and personality is such a perfect fit for Shaggy. The television broadcasts you picked up were sent back in the 60s. We thought all Earthlings dressed this way. Hey, 
Why mess with a classic look? The team put in the necessary effort to tie everything together, and that's one of the several reasons why I think this film is stronger than its successor, Cyber Chase. The Zombie Island team worked best when left to their own devices because they understood both the core of the franchise and the new direction that they were trying to take it in. Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders try something new with the romance and the ending twist, but it's still a Scooby-Doo mystery at its core. It takes the formula and complicates it in a way that works for an hour rather than 22 minutes. It pushes Shaggy, a typically very goofy and emotionally flat character, into the spotlight as a romantic lead, a role he is surprisingly endearing, genuine, and wholesome in. And I think the result is a really fun film that maintains the more grown-up and cinematic nature of Zombie Island and Witch's Ghost, even though the atmosphere is brighter and more lighthearted. It's just sad to me that it wouldn't last much longer after this. What do you think of Scooby-Doo and the Alien Invaders? How does this rank in the four movies in your list? And is there another Scooby-Doo movie that you actually like more than this one outside of those four? Let me know that and anything else you would like to share with me in the comments. Uh, let me know if I got something wrong, etc. You know the drill at this point. Next week, we're going to go back in time once again and take a look at Scooby-Doo and the Witch's Ghost. So get excited, take care of yourself, stay hydrated, tell your friends you love them because you never know when they're going to go. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye. I'm <laughs> <laughs>